What's up? I've been getting some requests on YouTube and Instagram to do a video on Get this thing right here, look. To do a video on loading samples into the OPZ. By chromatic samples, I mean samples that go on the synth tracks. And you can like diddle them on the keyboard and then they diddle to the right note. Note diddling. As opposed to sample based drum kit diddling. There's a couple videos out there already on loading chromatic samples into the OPZ, but I want to show some examples of what it sounds like when you screw it up and when you do it well and kind of talk about some of the limitations that I've noticed and ask you guys a couple questions as well. So let's get to it. Samples that go into your OPZ need to be in this format. It needs to be six seconds long. It needs to be in mono. It needs to be a 44,100 hertz and a 16-bit depth AIFF sample. On Max, it says AIF. AIF and AIFF are the same thing. They're same, same. Same, same, but different name. <laughs> this guy, Jiro Taki, uh, made an awesome browser script and also an awesome guide on samples in the OPZ. So if you read his guide, there is a string of bits that this browser script adds to the beginning of your file that lets the OPZ know that this AIF file is a synth track. I think that's a good experiment, actually. We're going to put in one of these samples without running it through this browser script. So it won't have that little string of bits at the beginning. And we'll see what happens when we put in an OPZ. Okay, so here are the experiments that I wanna do. A sample that's less than six seconds, a sample that is less than six seconds with silence filling in the rest of the six seconds. So the sample is six seconds long, but the actual noise that's playing is less than six seconds. A full six second sample with no silence. Uh, another full six second sample with no silence, but it's faded in and out at the end so that there's no clipping because I feel like there's probably going to be like a clip, not at the beginning, but at the end where the sound just cuts off really quick. In all of these samples, I will play an A, an A4 note, so the A above middle C, but this one I'll play a middle C, and this one I'll play a middle C, but I will change the bass frequency on this browser script here that we're going to be using. But I'll go over that when we get to it. Those are the experiments we're going to try and see how they work. I've got this little wavetable sound here. And I want to record that into my OPZ. So when you're creating a sample that you want to load into one of the OPZ synth tracks, it's just easiest if you set it to an A4. So whatever you got to do to pitch the sample up or down or change the key of the instrument you're playing, just make sure you're playing an A4 or some kind of A. So that way, when it goes into the keyboard, it's all set up correctly. And when you're playing an A on the keyboard, you're actually getting an A out of the sound, which is what you want, right? Okay, so first sample here. Let's do just a little A, just a little short boy. We're going to... Do this, and then we're going to consolidate it. We're going to show it in Finder. Take it, rename it. Now we're going to make one that fills up the six seconds. Show it in Finder. Steal it. Rename it a sample playing C instead of A4, so C4. This is Audacity. I usually use Adobe Audition. I really like it, but I'm going to use Audacity because it's free, so you guys will all have it. If you just Google Audacity, you can find a download for free. Let's take the short sample and see how it do. So we're going to want to cut off the silence at the beginning. 
we're going to make it even less less than six seconds because we love to do experiments. So in Audacity, you're going to want to go to Audacity Preferences. You're going to go to Quality, Default Sample Rate, 44100. 16-bit floats, sample rate converter, probably the best. You want the best, high quality, best quality. Yeah, best quality. And um, yeah, Diva, fuck a Diva. Split stereo to mono. Kill one of them. So now you got the mono. File, export audio. And we'll do underscore F for the final thing we're going to use. We'll put the finished ones down here. So this now, if we get info, it is 44 kilohertz, 16-bit, mono. What if we want to add time? In Audacity, we're going to go to Generate, Silence, Time, let's go 10 seconds. And boom, we got some more time to work with now. So now let's cut off anything after, let's make it exactly six seconds. Go to Selection Start down here, go to six seconds, exactly at six seconds and set this to something that's like a little higher. And then it'll give you the finger. You'll pull it and delete it. Now our sound file is exactly six seconds long. Export audio. Ah, shit. I exported them as waves. We're going back. File type, AIFF, Apple signed, 16-bit. Now we're cooking, baby. So you see here how it says 32-bit float it's not actually going to export as that because it's going to export whatever you have under the preferences. So that's the 16-bit. Okay. First one. Sample less six seconds. Put that through. We get this instrument.aif file that we will rename to underscore t for treated by the browser script. Next. Now let's put these things into this thing. To do that, instead of turning it on normally, right, to put it into computer connecting mode, you hold track, and while you're holding track, you turn it on you'll know you did it right because all the lights will be green when you're in this mode. And you'll also know you did it right because the OPZ shows up in your finder. So OPZ, look at all these things. You're going to want to, every once in a while, back this up. And just to make sure that if something goes wrong, you know what, I'm going to do that right now. Make a new folder, OPZ backup. And to back up your OPZ, you Literally just highlight everything, copy it, paste it into another folder. And now my OPZ backup has my OPZ in it. Everything that is in my OPZ in the state it is right now, if something ever gets screwed up, I'll be able to go to that backup, just copy it over into the OPZ folder, and I will be... Gucci Malucci. So my OPZ is in whatever mode. I go to sample packs, chord, and now we're just going to start loading this thing in. I don't have space for all my experiments on the same track, but they all function the same way. So 7, 8, 9, 10. Sample that is less than 6 seconds goes into the first one. Sample that's less than 6 seconds with the silence goes into the second one. This is on the chord track. Full 6 second sample goes onto chord track 9. 10 will put in the full six second one with the fade in fade out so those are all looking happy now we're going to go to the lead where i have three slots open first just so that we can 
compare and contrast and make sure that there's no difference between the chord and the lead track. We're going to also put in the one that is full six seconds. And then here, we're going to put in the sample that we put it at in C4. And then we're also going to put in the dry full six second one. Oh, and I want to try one more thing. So I'll throw this on the bass track. I wanted to try to put in, well, first, let's see. What is C4 in hertz? Middle C is 261.6 hertz. C4 sample. We're going to call this. So it's adjusted and it's treated. The normal one right there and then the adjusted one right there. So do not just unplug your OPZ. You're going to want to unmount it. So on your computer, however you safely unmount a drive, that's what you're going to want to do here. On a Mac, you just press unmount. Then the OPZ will flash blue, which means it's saving everything that you've done. And then it'll load into its mode of being awesome. So look, they're all in there. This is, that was less than six seconds. Right when you load it in, the envelope's gonna be all screwed up. Like the envelope is set all the way down by default. So you're gonna wanna turn the sustain all the way up so that you can get the. <laughs> That's crazy. So. The sample that we put in was really short. So the one that was less than six seconds that didn't have the silence, that's what this is. This is chord track seven. So if you hold it for longer than the note, then it starts bleeding into other things. So it just started playing one of my drum sample tracks. <laughs> so it works. But it's got all that Sample bleed. Crazy town. So that was a sample that was less than six seconds. Next one is a sample that's less than six seconds, but there's silence that fills the gap. So we're going to go here, fix the envelope. Right when we fix the envelope, actually, we're going to press track and record and hold on the thing. And that's going to save the preset, right? So if we go back and forth, this preset is still going to have the long sustain. So that's good. So this is. No sample bleed. Because it was full six seconds. So that was that. Next is a full six seconds without silence. Let's do the nine. Put the thing up. Save the preset so sounds good let's see what happens at the end of it let's see if it is chunky so it just kind of ends um you don't really hear a clip there or any artifact That was an A3, so it played longer than six seconds because it's pitching the sample down by slowing down the playback, but it's not doing any warping of the audio, so it's just going to play longer. That's pretty cool. That's our little organ that we put in, guys. Hell yeah. Let's just see how it sounds with the fade in, fade out. On Ableton right now, I'm playing an A4, and it's also an A4 here, just like it should be. Synth parameter one on an imported sample is always a bit crusher, and synth parameter two doesn't do anything.
So now we know that. Let's see if it does any looping if I set it to drone mode. So this is the holding track. This is the note length. And once it flashes, it's in drone mode. So it'll just play forever. Hopefully it loops. Okay, so even drone mode doesn't loop it. So that's good to know. There's no kind of looping algorithm for samples that's baked into this. On the lead track, I put the C4 one here, but then I put the sample that I didn't put through the script. And the sample that I didn't put through the script didn't even get read in. So I can't even access that. So you definitely have to use this script if you want to get samples into your OPZ. Or you got to figure out how to write a little script to do it yourself. But why not use this one? Let's see what the C4 one sounds like. So here I'm playing A, but I'm actually getting, I'm actually getting C. See that? So it's not mapped correctly. That's the one that I put in with 440 bass frequency. So let's switch over to the bass track where I put the adjusted version. Playing a C4. Hey, so this script works. That is awesome. Thank you so much, Jiro, for making this script. Dope. So here are the things we learned. All samples that you import must be exactly six seconds long. Otherwise, you get sample bleed or the sample ends too early. Imported samples do not loop, even if you hold it down for the full duration and even if it's in drone mode. Please leave a comment if you know how to sustain any imported chromatic samples forever. Make it so that the samples loop and I'll pin it to the top so everyone can learn how to do that. Jiro's script is super awesome. Hooray for that. So if your sample is not an A4, 440 hertz bass frequency, then set the bass frequency on the script to whatever your sample actually is, and it'll import just fine. Imported chromatic samples come in with an ADSR that is turned all the way down. So that's the way it comes up. So it'll sound like this. And you'll be like, what the hell, my sample? It's actually just the ADSR is down, so. Samples import the same way on all the synth tracks. All the chromatic samples only have one synth param, and that synth param is synth param one, and it's a bit crusher. And I love you all. I hope that helped. If it did, give it a like. Also subscribe for more OPZ content. And also check out some of my Ableton stuff that I put up in the video format on my channel. Check it out. Until next time, fist bump.